Hello friends, I am Dr. Chirak Churasama. Today I will be demonstrating bone patellar tendon bone graft harvest technique. So this guard is very useful in various ligamentous procedures. So typically the graft harvest starts in 90 degree knee flexion. This is the midline incision starting from lower pole of patella extending to upper border of tibial tuberosity dissecting the skin and subcutaneous tissue with scissors. After this, we put a small snick in the peritonin over patellar tendon and the peritonin is split longitudinally along the entire length of the patellar tendon that will expose the tendon. After retracting the peritonin on both the sides, we just identify the patellar tendon using the artery forceps just below the tendon separating it from the surrounding fat pad. Just need to measure the width of the patellar tendon, ideally central third of the patellar tendon should be harvested. So this is almost 3 cm of the width of the patellar tendon. So we will harvest central 1 cm, so you can say 10 mm of patellar tendon. So after marking the patellar tendon harvest width, we just split it, the tendon on both the sides using 11 number 9. So this is the mobile window of skin. So this is retracted proximally to identify the patellar tendon bone plug side. So this is the patellar tendon which is marked longitudinally. It is 2 cm in length and the width is same as the patellar tendon graft harvest width. So that is 1 cm. Now using this small saw which is having already markings on it, we start harvesting the bone plug on the patellar side first putting the lateral side first because we are operating from the lateral side of the patient. So this is the lateral side harvest using the small saw. You need to penetrate the patellar bone up to only 1 cm, not more than that because if you penetrate more there are higher chances of patellar fracture afterwards or intraoperative. So after completing on the lateral side, we come on the medial side and again the similar technique harvest using the small saw up to tendon uh, the bone depth up to 1 cm so I usually try to harvest in, in a, some form of trapezoidal saw so it will be easier to separate the bone plug so after completing medial and lateral side harvest you just come on the proximal side and this is only the angle of saw is being used to connect both the medial and lateral splits in the bone because this saw will have vibrate more and if you put it just on the flat proximal it will create a cross shaft bone stress riser. So after putting the after using the saw we will use the osteotome so this is 15 millimeter white osteotum which is used to complete the osteotomy side. So again the medially and laterally you just need to ensure whether our osteotomy is complete on the patellar bone plug side. So after medial and lateral osteotomy is complete I use 8 millimeter curved osteotum proximally to separate the bone plug from the parent patella. So this is how beautifully you can harvest the patellar bone plug first. So I always harvest patellar bone plug first. Then you just grab the harvested bone plug with the Alice forceps. You complete splits on the patellar tendon. You separate it from the surrounding tissue and underlying flat pad. You trace it down till the tibial tuberosity you reach. So this is how you can see the beautiful harvest of the central third of the patellar tendon. So again you need to use the mobile window of the skin incision. So it is hardly 4 cm long skin incision. So you need to adjust the knee position. So I harvested patellar tendon in flexion position. Now I want to go down below. So I do a little bit of extension of knee. So it is around 20 to 30 degree of knee flexion. So I can retract skin down more 
So again on the paternal tuberosity side, so tibial tuberosity side, it is the length is around 25 mm, the width is same, that is 10 mm and back is also 10 mm. So similarly I start on the lateral side, then I complete on the medial side with the sew. Again you need to keep check on the sew marking so you don't need to penetrate more. You can harvest some more depth on the tibial tuberosity side that will not create any much harm and after harvesting you can take a bone graft from the bone plug from the tibial tuberosity and you can put it on the tibial uh, sorry on the patellar harvest side. So this is after completing medial and lateral osteotomy you need to use the angle of this saw to complete it distally to connect medial and lateral splits. So after using the saw you need to use the osteotome that is either 15 or 20 millimeter in width just to ensure we have a complete osteotomy on medial and lateral side on tibial tuberosity. So once you are sure that the osteotomy is good enough on both the sides we again you can use 8 millimeter curved osteotome on the distal side of tibial tuberosity. So this is how you can harvest the tibial tuberosity plug. So once you harvest the tibial tuberosity plug you again mm -hmm. hold it with the Ellis forceps the graft. You need to separate it from the surrounding soft tissue using scissors. So this is how the graft harvest is complete. Now you need to prepare this graft on the back table. You need to check the symmetry of the graft whether it is passing through the desired size of through the uh, graft sizers. Once it is properly shaped you need to drill holes on both the sides. So I will drill one hole on the patellar bone plug side so that will go into femur and two holes on the tibial tuberosity side so that will go towards the tibia. So I will use number 5 ethibond to prepare the bone tendon graft. I don't use two number fiber wire in these cases because those two one number fiber wires are very sharp and their mm -hmm. narrow diameter will again there are higher chances of graft lacerations or you can see the tibial uh, or the femoral bone plug they will shattered while pulling hard on the graft side. So this is the tibial tuberosity side that will go towards the tibia. You just need to pass through both the holes and then I will prepare it through the tendon just like we do whip stitches in soft tissue grafts in semitigracilis. So this preparation is important because sometimes your graft is protruding out in ACL reconstruction because of excessive length of the graft and you may need to cut the extra protruding part or you may need to nibble out the protruding bony plug from the tibial mouth and that will not allow to compromise your graft fixation and you can even have a backup fixation on the tibial side if it is required. Normally I use the bias screws in both the side on femoral and tibial sides but in certain cases like in PCR reconstruction if I am using the BTB I will use the suspensor fixation on the tibial side. So this is how you prepare the tibial and femoral portion of the graft. So again the patellar bone block will go towards the femur and tibial bone block will go towards the tibia. So you can see this is the graft length is almost around 8.5 cm and it goes smoothly and snugly through 10 mm diameter of graft. Thank you.